All right, another anting week upon us. Here we have uh, Tapanuma Cecily stealing nectar, or pollen, possibly, from Jacob's Ladder. Which I discovered is actually fragrance, vaguely. That's kind of a minty kind of smell, but anyway, this is the odorous house ant, which smells awful when crushed. It's a little windy out here, so I'm not holding the camera particularly straight, but that's not helping anything with this shot. Anyway, it is really hot for uh, the start of uh, May. I mean, it's, it's May the 4th be with you day when I'm filming this. And oddly enough, it's like 90 degrees, which is very warm. <laughs> uh, where'd we get to? Eh, back to the flower. All right. I'll find another uh, thing to film here. All right. Caterpillar season has begun. I am on a rhododendron here, and this is actually a southern species, or a native flame azalea. I bought it because it's a very specific cultivar. Uh, these caterpillars seem to be mimicking the vein in the leaf that they're marching along as they chew up the uh, plant here. And they mostly remain motionless, especially when someone's, you know, around and breathing on them. They're walking around here on here. Now, some experts are probably going to say that though, they're actually, um, uh, what are the hell are the other things? There are other things that look like caterpillars, but they're not. It actually turns into a type of wasp. You're drawing a blank on the name. <clears throat> but I'm surprised how many there are on this tree. A shrub. They're making a slight dent in the foliage here, but it's nothing that won't leach out. You know what, just looking at that behavior, I'm saying these are not caterpillars at all. These are... Oh shoot, I'm drawing a blank. Some type of, uh, some type of fly. They're in the same, uh, thing as, um... Uh, what is it? Uh, they're in Hemenoptera. Little flies, that's what these are. And apparently they just are a generalist on rhododendrons in general. As I'm on the native one that's found in the uh, Appalachian Mountains around us, and something I've always noticed about this species is the flowers are sticky, and they get covered in these like little gnats and things. And I have found ants also among the uh, things that get attached to their their flowers. I believe this is meant to be an added treat to the hummingbirds and uh, things that come and uh, investigate the plant. Or maybe it's their way of getting uh, the caterpillars to, uh, or the sawfly larvae to um, not eat the flowers. Which would be interesting to see. I'm not seeing too many... No, this plant doesn't seem to have been hit as badly as the other one. Just uh, sort of combing the foliage here. I don't, they're not really jumping out at me. I am finding one or two here and there, but it's not as bad as the uh, one up the hill. So it would be neat to find out that this plant actually traps uh, insects to entice, you know, predatory insects that would consider this sawfly larva food. But that would require someone to actually do some sort of study with it. Yeah, mostly this plant has not been touched. That's interesting. Flowers are not open yet, of course. It's actually pollinated by the large swallowtail butterflies, as I believe. I don't know if they're, uh, if the pollen sticks to hummingbirds, though, but, but both can, uh, I believe both have been seen tending the flowers to these. Yes, anyway. There we go, there he is. Little bastard eating my plant. <laughs> Not sure what ended this one, but an assassin insect or a spider perhaps has uh, ended his little reign of terror. <laughs> This is another rhododendron. I'm not actually sure if this is native or not, but it's been getting used by uh, local fauna. I notice there are no um, insects attached to the flowers, which are opened. But over here I have a different one planted directly next to it, and you see one of these leaves is not like the other. And this little guy has consumed the entirety of the <laughs> leaf that should be there, which is neat.
So this is my newly planted white oak, Quercus alba, which, according to Doug Ptolemy and whoever he is citing, gets the most amount of caterpillars on it in North America, and it is just leafing out. These cute little tiny leaves here. No sign of caterpillar damage on it yet, but I do see some ants probing around on it. So hopefully I get some sort of uh, caterpillar activity on this, which would be neat to have. If only to see how inner ants uh, interact with it. Marcus Alba. Alright, I am at the stand of wild camacia along the side of my house, and completely different story this year from last. Now, last year it was Campanatus pensavonicus, and for like three weeks they were just tending little aphids that were all over these plants. This year I see it's Campanatus suburbatus, and I don't see any aphids, so I think they're just uh, stealing nectar. This unusual hot spell has caused all the flowers to just kind of come up and do their thing. <laughs> Whereas last year it was more pronounced, or drawn out. Here is... it was. There you go. <laughs> was the Tapanoma Cecily on here. I do see some little leaf hoppers, or sharpshooters, as the larger ones are called. Ah, oh, here we are. <laughs> And this ant was almost non-existent in my yard last year, whereas years past, they were all over. And, I, I mean, I, I was getting them in everything. <laughs> Just uh, stealing nectar from any plant that uh, opened. It was getting kind of annoying because I would have troubles finding flowers to some of the rarer things that I grow that weren't uh, filled with ants. But anyway, not as bustling with activity as last year. Here is Campanatus nearcticus. I think I'm saying that right. <laughs> I think last year I was calling this Campanatus caria for the longest time, but I think nearcticus was uh, the species around me. If I remember, I was, my misconception was that nearcticus was found farther north of me, and that is not the case. But anyway, they're here at this little holly tree, which is flowering, and they're just kind of walking around to all the very simple flowers that this plant produces. And it is just covered in Chromatogaster crossi, which are the little acrobat ants. Oh, they're stealing the nectar. Up here. Ooh, we have a scale insect, I think. These little bumps that the uh, ants are tending. Yeah, so this uh, bump here, that looks like uh, just part of the plant. It's actually a type of insect that produces little bits of honeydew. And the ants tend to them. I've never noticed those on this uh, little bush before. Truthfully, I was going to cut this thing out. Replace it with something native, but it gets so much attention, I'm just gonna let it die naturally, because it certainly isn't doing well here. <laughs> Evergreens usually have an issue with, uh, they, t they tend to be slower growing, but they're more resilient to uh, fire. So when a uh, oak or maple tree uh, or forest uh, burns down, the more uh, evergreen things tend to take over. Whenever I see Tetramorium running in lines like this, not really digging or collecting any sort of food, I know chances are at the end of it there's probably a little Tetramorium war happening, a little territorial war. And sure enough, that is exactly what's happening here. This is like a minor skirmish. This is probably where it started. But they've gotten, this colony has been pushing this other colony back here to just a mob of ants here. <laughs> and uh, there's a picnic 
tape on my way. So. Get in the action here. Unfortunately, Tetramorium are kind of built to defend against other Tetramorium, so most of what's happening here is just uh, non-lethal tugging. Eventually, one colony submits to the other, just from sheer numbers. And I think a few do even do die. Get the other colony, I wonder. This might actually be right here. The uh, tug of war continues with the ant boar because they used to be over there, but now I see they've moved over to here. But it's looking like this colony is actually pushing back. So this is the black cherry tree in my yard, and. I was kind of waiting for caterpillars to start nibbling at the leaves, but then I found this happening. There is a strategy where something, like the caterpillars sort of realize that the birds are looking for leaves with caterpillar damage on them, so after they're done eating, they'll just nibble the leaf clean off. And I was kind of wondering who did this, and then I realized, around here on this branch, this is a little shed that a caterpillar, probably a red spotted purple, overwintered in. And I didn't think any of those ones from last year made it survive the winter because of all the ants on this thing. But they spend the winter in that and then they come out and do their thing to finish their life cycle. Unfortunately, if the adult uh, caterpillar here is still alive someplace, uh, I don't see him, but I do see plenty of ants. Uh, so. I'll keep looking now. This is the rhododendron again, with the sawfly larva, I remember this time, on it. And if I can get this to focus here, it's kind of a cute shot of one eating a, uh, a flower here, which is a very expensive cultivar. <laughs> kind of pretty looking too. But we won't hold that against him. But it's neat seeing how, from the right angle, they do just kind of blend in with the leaves. And this one is just jumping away at half, oh, half a leaf here. At some point, I'm hoping the birds do discover these. But I'm not going to help them out, because I don't like birds. But anyway. Alright, so this is our native flame azalea. This one you'd find around here, and this opened up today. And don't those flowers look lovely, you know, when they're not covered in dead insects? Um, it's kind of odd, they only really seems to happen to a few clumps here, because I see a lot of them don't have any insects on them at all, but I'm not sure what causes that, but they have a nice fragrance to them. Very light, very faint. Um, I have noticed uh, the sawflies. Of all the rhododendrons in my yard, they're only on the native species. They're not on this non-native one over here at all, as far as I can tell. Um, probably would have been better to show that off before it leafed out, but I think it's more the uh, issue with the leaves on this particular type, whatever it is. They're too uh, thick and waxy, and they probably have a different chemical uh, defense happening here too, because it's from Asia. Now, aside from the nectar that these things are pushing out, the their uh, role in the food web here, locally, is a uh, dead end. Uh, nothing really eats them, 
Um, I see ants nectar scraping on the leaves, but they can frankly do that to anything that pushes out leaves and have sap on it <laughs> slightly. Uh, they can also steal nectar from the flowers, so I guess there's that. But, you know, aside from the flower aspect here, there's nothing, you know, going on. You know, this is, you know our native one seems to be a, lo a good uh, little gnat control also. <laughs> But because these are, you know, even if a bird does not eat the uh, little sawfly larva here, when it, you know, if it's allowed to complete its life cycle, eventually it's going to expire of old age, fall to the ground, and become ant food, which, you know, protein-based foods, they tend to feed um, the uh, larva that are developing and create more ants, whereas the nectar just sustains the adults. So, basically what I'm saying is plant more native plants and you'll get more insects. <laughs> uh, this is a new tree I planted. It's Cornus Florida. This is the white flowering dogwood, which is pretty common, pretty recognizable, because this is past its prime, but it has these, you know, uh, fake uh, petals all around it. And if you actually look inside the flower cluster here, you see a series of individual little tiny flowers that are, you know, you know they're the actual flowers. But the thing about this species is it's big and showy and everyone grows it. And, you know, just because they have these nice white petals that are very obvious. But if I show you a different species... This is red to twig dogwood. Actually, it's the yellow twig form of it, but it's, anyway, it's, it's, it's Cornus uh, seriosa. If I'm saying that right. And you can see more clearly the flower cluster and all the individual flowers that are there with their own little petals. And this little... Caminato subsericea <laughs> that is going around gathering what little nectar or floral oil is on each one here. So I just wanted to point that out because not a lot of people notice that, you know, dogwoods have different kinds of uh, flowers and things. And I see them on this red one here. Now those are a little bit past their prime. But anyway, directly above us, though, I have another dogwood. <laughs> and I've left some of the lower branches intact so I can better do this. It hasn't started flowering yet, but this is alternate leaf dogwood. Uh, Cornus alternifolia. And you can see better still, you know, it just kind of looks like a head of broccoli, but each individual little nub here is its own little flower that's going to open up. And it'll look pretty similar to the, the, uh, that one out there. But anyway, dogwoods. Maybe I'm wrong about these uh, dogwoods not producing any nectar. I might have a slight floral oil brought out after it rains, because I clearly see this ant is full of food. Where did we get to? There we are. Yeah. So this is the dogwood Cornus alternifolia in flower, and you can see just how many more blooms you get for compared to what is arguably the showier species here. It's also abundant with uh, pollinators, so it's kind of a cool day though, so it's not a great example of that. But you know, you got queen bumblebees here using it still to uh, fuel their little empires they're starting up. I don't know much about bumblebees, but I know a fair amount of them are parasitic. This is probably one, considering how late in the year it is, because I see this other dogwood I have underneath here. This is probably a young worker to one of the other species. Oops. There were honeybees up here somewhere. I don't have a hive in my yard anymore, so I don't see them as much, which is goes against what I was taught in like the beekeeping school. Uh, they would say that the honeybees really don't use the plants that are immediately next to the hive, but that's like I don't see them at all <laughs> anymore, practically on any of my flowers. So clearly, you know, they were flying and doing an orientation flight, then landing back down. There's the honeybee back there, but I try and get close enough. To it, so someone still has a hive around me. Oh. 
They're very, they don't like being approached the wrong way. But anyway, Hornus alternifolia. So I realized what last week's ant war might be about. Um, I didn't realize this at the time, but my parents have started moving the uh, bird feeder to the backyard again, and that's just created a huge mess of seeds here. Um, if I had my way, we would not be feeding the birds at all. It's just kind of a something that's actually not necessary, especially if you have like lots of um, plants that pump out seeds constantly throughout the year. Um, yeah. But I talked them into just doing sunflowers, which are actually a native plant. Most of what's in bird seed is not native to the U.S., but um, I'm not seeing too many examples of it here. But if we just go around the corner here, uh, something, probably a squirrel or something, filled up its mouth and just started eating bird seed over here. I thought there was a handful of seeds my parents just threw out. But this is about where last week's ant war was uh, taking place. And it moved uh, farther on down this way. And every so often I'll see uh, that happen, where they just kind of, you know, they're very interested in these seed husks, these small amounts of nourishment that are coming in here. And this is probably the smallest tetramorum war I've ever seen, where they just have a single individual drawn and quartered. <laughs> so, yeah, that's happening. And they are actually moving the seeds over here. Um, it'd be kind of neat, I guess, to mold the seeds around in some sort of dye or something. Not, uh, nothing that would actually be toxic to birds or anything like that. Which are, you know, coming in as I'm... The second I took, put my head up, they suddenly fly away. It's kind of comical. But anyway, yeah, just kind of mark the seeds and just see where the different color seed husks end up in the yard, because I know of at least two colonies that are using this uh, area for uh, food here. Okay, there's one he's got something. Yeah. Anyway, get more. There's a happy little spider here that caught himself an ant. You're under my hackberry tree, which is... It does produce edible fruit. It has yet to be a flowering age, though. And things do nibble at it. But I can't say I've ever noticed it being all that productive. You a caterpillar? No. Okay. <laughs> and let's explore here a little bit.